Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. What is going on, guys? It is Daniel. We are finally back here again, and I know it's been a while, but uh, like you can tell from the title of this video, I have been gone. Uh, alhamdulillah, I went to Mecca, I went to Medina, so I went to Saudi Arabia. Um, yeah, alhamdulillah, I was invited to go for the last 10 days of Ramadan. I went and um, it was amazing. It was an amazing experience. Um, I'm very grateful. I'm very blessed to have been able to go and experience that. I know that people, lifelong Muslims, um, don't have the opportunity to go and, and experience all that. And they pray for this. And I, so I'm aware that it's a major blessing to have the opportunity to to go and I do feel like it was um, uh, beneficial for my Iman. Um, so I, yeah, just this video, I just want to talk about my whole experience there. Um, I will make more videos on, on this, uh, like specifically about how my Umrah went. I did perform Umrah twice while I was there, Alhamdulillah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, a friend of mine, Taufik, uh, may Allah bless him generously, please include him in your du'as. Uh, invited me. He's from Morocco. He invited me to go. So, um, you know, hopped on a plane, uh, went out there, and right off the bat, it, I was met with a little bit of, uh, I don't know, the whole the whole trip just had like a lot of funny uh, things that that happened. For example, when I when I arrived, um, I was under the impression that I could get a visa on arrival. And before I left, I, I converted, I exchanged all of my Thai currency into Saudi rials. And uh, so I took money out of my bank account, got cash, and then converted it into uh, Saudi rials. And when I arrived in Saudi Arabia, uh, I went to get my visa on arrival, and they told me, sorry, no cash, only card. I said, well, I only have cash. There's, there's no, I have no money in my bank account. I said, sorry. I said, well... You know, I just got off the plane. I don't even have a visa yet. I'm stuck in the airport. I said, well, what should I do? What am I supposed to do now? I don't have any cash. They said, you, you just have to uh, ask somebody for help. And, and mind you, I was alone on the, on the flight. My friend was already in Saudi Arabia. There's no Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi doesn't work, so I can't, call, I can't call my friend. I can't call anybody. And there's just all these people getting in line to get their visa that they'd prepared already. And they're all strangers. I don't know if they can speak English. A lot of them can't speak English. So I'm like, oh, man, what a start to this trip, huh? I didn't know what to do. So I'm sitting there thinking, mm, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? And I realized there was still some money in my bank account, but I didn't think it was enough. But it, possibly it was enough. So I, said, I, said, I came back to the woman. I said, hey, look, try this card. I don't know if it's going to work, but just try because I don't know what else to do right now. And she said, okay, give me your passport, give me your card. She, she scans my passport and she says, you have a visa already. I thought, wow, alhamdulillah, I thought it was like a miracle. Like, mashallah, it's, it's a miracle, I have a visa already. And she's like, did you buy a visa? I said, no, I, don't, I didn't register any visa. And everyone, look, they, they all look at each other, all the officers like confused, like what? I'm confused, I don't know. Turns out I called my friend and told him what happened. He said, brother, I bought you the visa already. I set it up for you. <laughs> so, you know, that was just funny. I thought it was a miracle. Turns out my friend just helped me out. But, you know, it was a miracle. You know, Allah is the best of planners. So, anyways, I got my visa. I hopped in a taxi. I had a crazy taxi. Man, anybody that's been to Mecca, and anybody that's been to Mecca, you know the taxi rides are crazy, man. What's up with those taxi drivers? They're out of their minds, man. I had, like, every taxi ride I took in Saudi Arabia was crazy. It, it tested my patience. It, um, you know, and, uh, you know, I was already in Iran at that point. I, I got in Iran on the plane, on the plane before I hit the Mikat. And so I'm in this taxi and this taxi driver is just acting erratic and crazy. I thought, okay, I'm in Iran. Let me just keep my cool, you know, don't lose my temper or anything. And um, anyway, so the taxi ride was crazy, but alhamdulillah, I finally got to my hotel. Got to my hotel, I performed Umrah. Um, that, I'll, I, I want to make a separate video on that because there, there's too much to go into on that uh, here. But, you know, I spent, basically I spent a few days in Mecca. Um, spent a lot of time at the masjid. 
Uh, I didn't even have a hotel. I, I did for like one night, maybe two, maybe like two nights. The first two nights I was in Mecca, I did have a hotel. But most of the time I, I just spent in the masjid. Um, the prayers there were so amazing. The imams there so good. Uh, all the adans, beautiful. It, it just felt so good to just be in the rhythm of like hanging out at the masjid, hear the adan, okay, find a place to pray, go pray, talk to some people, you know, sit and just um, meditate, do dhikr, you know. It was just such a good, um, I told my friend, I told my friend, it was like, a, this trip was like a spiritual boot camp. It was just like, it was so, it was so great. And with the last 10 days of Ramadan, like you could really feel the, the energy of the Ramadan there. And it was just so, it was so good. It was such a good time. Um, yeah, so I spent a few, a few good days there in Mecca. And, you know, the masjid, the masjid is really beautiful. I will say the city of Mecca itself is is crazy energy. It's crazy energy, and, and at first it was like a bit overwhelming. And then you know I talked to some people about it, and I thought about it, and it makes sense because basically the, the Mecca is is full of people from all over the world that come to that city, and a lot of them have never traveled. A lot of them have never left their hometown. So when you sit and and you watch like a uh, for example, some people, they don't even know how to use the escalator. Like the stairs, they go up, right? They, they, get, they, they come to it and they're like, what do I do? That's how uh, um, unexposed these people are to the modern world, some of them. And so when you have people like that from all different parts of the world come together into one city... It gets a little bit hectic. Like, for example, people don't know how to wait in line to get on a bus. They just, like, act like monkeys and just shove themselves into the bus. And at first I'm like, why, why are people acting like this? This is not what I expected. But then I thought about it, yeah, and, and I had some people t tell me, like, dude, think about it. Like, these people never travel their whole life. So it's, it's, it's pretty wild there in Mecca. It's, pretty, it's a pretty wild energy. But inside the masjid, uh, Wow, it's it's crazy. The, the the amount of people there and just the energy is powerful. It's very powerful there. So I spent a few days there and then I went ended up going to Medina as per the recommendation of my friend. He said, Man, you gotta go to Medina. You gotta go to Medina. You gotta go to Medina. So anyway, I hopped on that speed train up to Medina. How, I will say the speed train is very nice, very impressive. A lot of things in Saudi Arabia I found to be very impressive. Like they got it going on there in a lot of ways. Um the speed train is a, is a great example. It was so clean. It was, it was very fast. And, like, it was sort of this surreal moment. I remember pulling out on the train, you know, d d departing. And, and they, like, uh, came on the intercom uh, basically saying uh, dua that, that uh, Prophet Muhammad wasallam used to say before traveling. I'm like, this is crazy that this is just in public. Like... I don't know. I, it just coming. I guess it's coming from American background and, and living in Thailand to see like that embrace of Islam in public was just like surreal. It was just surreal. Anyway, um, I went to Medina. Medina, super nice place. Very nice place. The the word refined kept coming. To, sorry, excuse me. The word refined kept coming to mind. It's just so clean there. It's refined. It's elegant it's scholarly very nice very nice vibes there at medina i will say it's um i think it's a little bit too it's almost like too um developed almost for my own tastes but it's it's very nice nonetheless that that city i was very impressive i spent a lot of uh time at the prophet of of muhammad peace be upon him Spent a lot of time there. Most of my time I spent there just doing the prayers and, and hanging out on the on the mosque grounds. Um, I did have a pretty nasty foot injury while I was there, so a lot of the time I spent at that mosque was just kind of relaxing and trying to uh, allow my foot to heal. And I injured my foot doing umrah, and it made it difficult to walk. But um, alhamdulillah, you know, it was a great it was a great time I spent there in Medina, and I met I met some cool people. Uh, had really good prayers, you know, I will say multiple times on this trip in Mecca and Medina, I had like, I had emotional 
outpourings during the prayers. Um, and, you know, that's just um, something I, I thank God for, you know, it's that my heart softened in those moments. And yeah, it's, it's something to be grateful for when you have something like that happen because you, you, it's like you can feel it. You can feel your Dean. You can feel your Iman in those moments. It's real. And if, you know, sometimes in prayer we pray and, and you don't feel anything. You know what I mean? I think that's also normal. Um, but we can just only hope and make dua that we can have hearts that are soft enough to have these moments of softening and and you feel the emotion. Anyway, um, the masjid there is very beautiful. The imams did a great job. Um, I saw a lot of beautiful faces. You know, I did see some bad behavior there in Mecca and, and Medina too. Less so in Medina, to be honest. More so in Mecca. But the amount of beautiful faces and beautiful deeds I saw in Mecca and Medina made up for it, for sure. Like, I saw some very beautiful faces there and had some very good conversations with people from all over the world, people from Afghanistan, people from Pakistan. I will say, there, there's a lot of you from Pakistan. Wow, there's a lot. It seemed like a lot of the people I met from Pakistan. And I'll say this, you Pakistani guys are handsome. I'm, I'm like blown out of the water. I'm like, I met a lot of them. I'm like, what is up with you guys? You all look like movie stars, every single one of you. I just kept meeting these guys. They have these beautiful eyes, uh, nice beards, uh, nice stature. What, what, what are you guys eating over there? You guys are all beautiful. So alhamdulillah, um, shout out to Pakistan. And I, and I will say too, I want to visit Pakistan too. I had some guys show me, uh, Pakistan is a beautiful country. I had no idea how beautiful, I thought Pakistan just looked like India. And then they showed me like all these photos and videos. I'm like, Pakistan up in the north, it looks like Switzerland. You all got these beautiful mountains, big lakes. So some of the most beautiful people I met on the trip were from Pakistan. And, and so shout out to Pakistan. Um, there's a lot of you. Pakistan is a very populous, uh, populated uh, country. Anyway, met people from Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, people from a lot of Uzbeks, a lot of uh, Kyrgyzstan, Kazakhstan, uh, Egypt. Of course, I met Arabs, you know, just people from all over the world. I, I, I will say I didn't meet anybody from America. I maybe saw a few people that looked like they may have been from America, but I, I uh, didn't have the opportunity to speak with them. Anyway, uh, a lot of beautiful people. A lot of beautiful people, and, and I felt at home. I really felt at home in Mecca and Medina. I felt at home there. Like, I felt welcomed. Is is? I felt at home. I felt at home. I felt like uh, I was in the right place. I felt like I was in the right place. And not only, like, the, the feeling of the energy, but also, like, seeing the people around me. Like, yeah, these, I, I identify with this crowd generally not of course probably i can't fully relate to everyone that's there well, only maybe maybe uh, only as far as that we both are muslims um but um a lot of people there a lot of people there i would say most people there i felt like i could uh, relate with them i i i feel like they would have my back and i would have their back for for some reason and that's maybe just because we're muslims but also I don't know, it just seemed like every all the men there, it's like, they all stand for something. They all look strong. All the men there look strong. <laughs> Especially in America, you walk around and you see a lot of men, it's like, you have no backbone. You, you don't stand for anything. I can just see. You can just see right through them. Like, you're, you're weak. You're weak. And I didn't see a whole lot of that in, in Saudi. Muslim men are, are strong men. They have... Uh, See, I, I bet I, I started to think about it. I'm like, I want to do like a study and, and measure uh, the amount of free testosterone in, in Muslims in general and see if it's higher than, I don't know, say Christians or in America or, or something like that. I, I, I think there's probably something to that. I think there's probably something to that. And, and that's an interesting conversation because you can look at ways to op optimize your testosterone. And one of the ways to optimize your testosterone is to have less stress. What's the, what's the, what better way to have less stress than to believe in God and to trust God? You know what I mean? You sh if you really believe in God, there's really no reason to fear anything. 
Because everything in this world was created by God. And God is external to that. So anything in this world that, that harms you or, or, or gets in your way, it's all, if, if you know it's all sent from God, there's no reason to be scared. There's no reason to have fear. So anyway, that was a long tangent. I don't even know where I was. Anyway, people there were beautiful. Um, ended up coming back to, Me to Mecca from Medina, uh, performing Umar again. Uh, and that's where I spent like the last few nights was back in Mecca, Laylat al uh doing the prayers. You know, it's a grind out there, man. During Ramadan, like I have, I had some, I had some, uh, like my boss, for example, I was supposed to do some work and, you know, he's texting me like, hey, can you, I'm like, dude, I ain't got time, dude. Like, I don't even have time to sleep. Like, there's no time. I'm barely sleeping. I slept like two or three hours every night, you know prayer is the priority here you're praying and then when you're not praying you're spending time getting to a place to pray and maybe getting some food while you're on your way and then hoping maybe you could like get a like a quick nap you know here and there it's crazy man it's a grind out there but it was great i really enjoyed it i really enjoyed it and um uh inshallah you know i i can go again i hope i can go again um, I can't imagine bringing a family though there. That would be crazy. That, that's a that's a big responsibility. I think being alone was a lot easier because you know I just can go lone wolf and I have my buddy there too. Which, but he also had a sister there, so he spent a lot of time like taking care of his sister, which is which was good. Um, but yeah, so I spent a lot of time alone there, and so it was easy to kind of navigate and just kind of like slip through the crowd. But I can't imagine like having a wife and kids there. That would be something else. Um, but uh, anyways, I don't really have any, much else to say. Alhamdulillah, it was a great experience. Very happy I got to go experience that. And um, inshallah, I can do it again. Hopefully I can maybe meet one of y'all there one day. We can uh, Maybe we can have a big meetup in Mecca one time. That would be cool. Um, anyways, I'm back. You know, inshallah, I'm back. We can uh, make some videos and um, get back to the grind, get back to learning here and uh, interacting with all of you brothers and sisters. So, inshallah, I hope you all in, uh, enjoyed this video. And inshallah, we will see you in the next one. May Allah bless you generously for watching. See you in the next one.